Group 2, and my name is Uzizomalayami. I'm representing Group 2 as a secretary. The topic for the Bible study is Jesus prayed for his disciples. And the introduction, Jesus expressed serious and deep concern for the flock, the remnant that he is going to leave behind. They didn't need to pray for them specifically. They are precious to him, especially that they will be carrying on after his dispatcher, his mission to the world. Jesus knew the nature of the battle that awaits them from enemy within and without, especially that he who has been providing care, protection, and succor will no longer be physically available for them. He had to bring before his father the critical needs of their lives. This is practical love in action. We shall be learning how he expressed these concerns in prayer and what they have. We discussed John 17, 9 to 19. And there are some series of questions that were asked during the Bible study. So we talked about the head, the heart. Now to the head. This Bible passage that we just read, what does it say and mean? So, our coordinator asked us and several people stood up to contribute. So the first question is, who are those people that Jesus prayed for and why? So our coordinator asked us and we all said the apostles, disciples of God. And why did Jesus pray for them? Firstly, is that, that they might be protected from evil. Another person said, for them to be able to stand during the test of time. Then another person said, they need the power of God to move and do the work of the Father. So to the next question, what were the issues of concern that Jesus prayed about in verse 11 to 17, and what did they mean? This was the topic we looked at. The first was from John 17, 9 to 19. And we did the introduction and the discussion questions, starting from the head. What does it say and mean? That is the passage we read. Who are those that Jesus prayed for? We answered that it was his disciples that Jesus was praying for. And why did he need to pray for them? He needed to pray for them because he was at the close of his ministry and he will be leaving them here. He knows that they will need protection, they will need guidance, they will need direction. And so he was calling on God that he should take good care of these people he's living so as to be able to carry out the work of discipleship very well. What were the issues and concerns that Jesus prayed about? The first one we looked at was that he said he did not want God to take them away from the world. We discussed that it was very important that the disciples should live after Jesus. We were asking ourselves that if somebody becomes born again today, and then he goes to heaven like Enoch. The next person becomes born again. He goes to heaven like Enoch. Who will remain behind to take care of, to feed the flock, to preach the gospel? That that was the mind of Christ when he said that, I'm not asking that you take them away from the world, but that we should keep watch over them. So they should still remain here. He also knew that they needed um, security. They needed his protection. Because Jesus himself was faced with diverse trials from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And he knew the disciples would face much more than he did. So he was asking God to, to fortress them, fortress them up, encourage them in himself so that they would keep the faith and continue the race preaching the gospel of Christ. He also asked that he help them to know that though they are in the world, they are not of the world. They needed to be a good example. What is the implication of this prayer? Sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is truth. We look at what sanctification means. Being separated, set aside, called into a specific service. And Jesus Christ was saying, 
this 11, because we know there he said that though they were 12, he lost one. He said, I did not lose any except the son of perdition. And so he knew that the 11 that were, that were remaining needed help, needed spiritual help to be able to stand, to withstand the weather, not to fall like Judas did. So sanctification is being separated, set aside for a specific task. So he's asking God to help the eleven that were left behind to be able to carry on with the work of mission that has been committed into their hands without losing faith, without losing focus. So we've discussed that it's true you can be born again, but if you are not sanctified, it's not complete. There is a point to be born again and there is a point to receive sanctification. And the sanctification is what still still are being born again. So we should not say we are born again and leave the sanctification. They must go together. In fact, it's very important. That is why Jesus said, sanctify them by thy word. And what is the word? The word of truth. And who is the truth? It is Jesus Christ. So we learned that also. And then we came to the heart. What is Jesus Christ telling me as an individual? The first question was, how do you react to issues when they don't have direct effect upon you or your family? How do you react to them? And we're able to now see that most often than not, if it is not directly to us or our family, there is a lazy, a nonchalant attitude towards it. I was able to use myself as an example, just as others, but I use myself as an example that when something happened, the way I reacted to it. But there, I was chastised, I knew it was wrong. During the action, I knew it was wrong, but I was adamant. But with yesterday's study, I said, no, it's really, it's because it's not affecting me directly. Mm -hmm. That's why I behave like that. When I go back, I will make restitution. Mm -hmm. So we, we also ask, why is, um, why is it so difficult for church workers to work and work together. That is um, working together and then doing the assignment together. So that's work and work. And we learned that for some it might be pride, for some it might be not being careful enough, and for some not being submissive. That is why they cannot work together. And when there is disunity, there can be no agreement to work together. Yes. yes. So we also asked about, um, we discussed how to, how would you explain the attitude of Jesus on praying? We learned there that it is not, when we pray, it should not only be about me, my children, my husband, my siblings. We should also remember the church, that is the congregation, the state, the nation, that our prayer life should not be a selfish one. Jesus was not selfish with his prayer life. Looking at that passage, he was praying earnestly for his disciples. That was the purpose. It's not as if Jesus did not have time to pray for himself. He actually did. But the disciples were also paramount to him. So how are we relating? How are we doing with our prayer life as per our congregation, the states, the nation? How is our prayer life? What is the focus of our prayer life? So those were the things we were able to discuss in our group yesterday. Yes. Jesus expressed his concerns to his father. He went to him in the introduction that when a man is going on a long journey, he will find time on the eve of his dispersion for a quiet time with his family. As a man of God, he will end by commending to God not only himself and his journey, but also the family whom he leaves behind, especially if he is leaving them for good. In this prayer, which closes the prayer word that began from John 13, verse 33, it is noticed that Jesus expressed his own concern to his father. 
It is a score card of his activities and services as he prepares himself for his death and glorification. In verses 1 to 8, we see Jesus' intimate relation between him and his father, and to learn his origin and his future, his mission and its successes. This is obviously the focus of the first study. First, John 17, 1 to 8. We have the following questions for discussion. Egg question. What does it say and mean? In our group, we discussed that despite that Jesus is also a God, he this still is made to to reverence to his father, that he respected his father and made his concerns known to him in prayers. A. What does the passage reveal about the relationship of Jesus to God? We were able to discuss that the relationship between Jesus and God is that his father and son relationship and is also a cordial relationship. Number B, what was the mission of Christ as we read in verses 2, 3, and 6? His mission is to bring eternal life to us and those that are still in darkness, to deliver us from power of darkness, and to bring us close to God. Number C, how was Jesus assessed according to verses, verses 7 and 8? He was assigned, uh, he gave everything to God. Everything that God has given to him, he has also given to us. He was assigned as a faithful preacher, who will never preach heresy, but the word that was given to him by Father and through the Father only. D. What was the work of what was the work Jesus completed through his coming to give us salvation? Through his coming, what warranted him descending from glory to do the work of his father? He descended from glory through the year to do the work that was assigned to him by the father. And what was the assignment he carried out to die for us on the cross of Calvary? And through his coming, he completed the work of salvation by dying for us on the cross. Number at at now, what is my attitude? We are able to discuss that we all know our attitude, and in our journey to uh, in our journey, this Christian's journey, God helped us to know more of our attitude by revealing it to us through the help of Holy Spirit. The A now in the heart. They ask us what other things or ways do you consider as options to Christ in the matter of eternal life? We discussed and we are able to conclude that there is no other option apart from Jesus Christ because through Jesus Christ we are able to see God and through him we got our salvation. So there is no other option to Christ in matter of eternal life and salvation. Ask B, what is your performance index in the ministry? Index is what is your performance or uh, the inclusion that we have in the ministry. They are now asking us, is it physical, spiritual, or both? We are able to discuss yesterday that it's both physical and spiritual. That for us to be balanced Christians, we have to balance as clergy wife and those that are in the ministry, that physical aspect and the spiritual aspect has to be balanced. That yesterday we learned that the Bible said we should add virtue to our Christian life. Then they cite examples of physical uh, the physical aspect of the ministry, visitation, we show people love through our character and we are able to explain that love is what is inside of us that another person cannot see. But through our character, we can show love. That is what makes love physical in that index in the ministry. Then spiritual, that when you know people's problems physically, spiritually, you can help them in prayers and counseling. And we are told yesterday, that we should be ourselves. We should not imitate others or imitate what is not good. The Bible says we should be imitate, uh, we should be imitators of the grace of God. He said we should be alive and we should be balanced Christians. Don't say I'm spiritual that we neglect the physical aspect of it. That both goes together. See now. This one was a personal question that what is one thing that is motivating you to serve God as clergy wives? 
yesterday we were able to conclude that because God is the rewarder of everybody that legally serve him, that, that is our hope. Because it's God that will join the whole world. That sometimes in our relationship with each other, sometimes we don't really know our enemy, we don't really know our friend. Because of pretending issues that we have in the household of God. That we should be ourselves and we should remember that all of us, 2 Corinthians 5.10, all men shall give, we shall stand before God to give account of what we have done in the body, either good or bad. So we brought out these things as a motivation. And there are some people said they believe in their calling. That it is God that has called us. That we have a ground to cover. That now we are sure that at the end of the day, that God will reward us in heaven. And a crown of glory is laid down for us in heaven. That that is what motivates us as Christians. Then some people said, even when churches reject us, sometimes we have our family to come back to. This is a subject. So, study throughout this retreat will be on the above chapter of John, which is often called the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus. This chapter is said to be the longest prayer that Jesus offered. Luke often mentions Jesus as, as prayer. According to Luke 3, 21, 5, 16, 6, 12, 9, 18, 28, 29, 11, 1, 22, 41 to 45, and 23, verse 46. Perhaps the Lord's prayer is comparable, but not even it provides the depth of range of ideas offered here. Listening to the prayer of someone often provides a cliche into the deeper recesses of that person's consciousness of God. And this is what we are experiencing of Christ in this chapter. Jesus made known his concern to God, according to 17 verses 1 to 18, and then turned to concern for his disciples, according to Luke 17, 9 to 19, and the future church, 17, 20 to 26. We shall therefore in this order consider the following section for each day, number one. Jesus expressed his concerns to his father, 17, 1 to 8. Number 2, Jesus prayed for his disciples, chapter 17, verse 9 to 19. Number 3, Jesus prayed for the future church, chapter 17, 20 to 26. We shall adopt the discipleship model that is, that is obedience-based because that is solely what, why we are all together in this retreat. We grow our faith. We need to be established on a firm foundation which enables the superstructure to stand. In the same vein, our spiritual growth requires building up in these four areas of our lives. A. Understanding. John 8, verse 32. B. Attitudes. Proverbs 4, 23. C. Obedience. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. D. Relationships. John 13, 35, day, chapter 15, verse 8. In each of this study, we shall be basing our discussions along the line of four HS, which are number one, head, understanding the values, two, heart, attitude, and character, number three, hands, obedience, and skills, number four, help, relationship, and multiplication. Through this means, we shall have the right understanding of the passage, apply the understanding of our personal lives and ministry. This will enable us to take specific and measurable decisions that will positively affect our relationship both with God and fellow humans. Strengthening the Bible study since our retreat began yesterday. And so, we have seen it. And you have now see the difference of how you should study the Bible. Did you understand since yesterday what you, the group Bible study you are in and how everything is being explained? Do you enjoy it? Yes. Is it are you not happy with it? Yes. Uh -huh. So you should be able to read Bible and first of all apply it. To yourself, if you just read Bible and you say you are born again, 
and you don't even apply it to yourself and pointing to others and whatever, it will not go well and you, that person will not change. If you have any behaviors that is not good, you first of all tell yourself, how can I change? Understanding the word. It's not novel you are reading. It's Bible. Understanding it. That is head. Heart. Attitude. You have seen the way the translated is for you here. You are the one that did it in your group. What is your attitude to something? When you can correct yourself, the whole world will be good. If Mrs. is only that, uh, look at it, look at herself and say, how can I correct my life and change? If I look at myself in some way, I say, how can I correct myself and change? If Mrs. Akande will look at herself and say, how will I look at myself and change? Oh, the world will be good. Whoever is around you, either in your family, you must change. So you must work to do devotion, daily devotion. When, I, when I'm back in the afternoon, I have to make sure with Mike you will hear that this song, daily devotion, do your daily devotion, is good to do it. And most of the time, you rush to family devotion, not doing your personal one first. Quietly do your personal devotion. And again, not only in the morning, whether in the, the, uh, the, the evening, whether in the business, even if you are in the office, you can. Take devotion and have your Bible if you have not finished it. And most especially when you talk of quietness, you want to deal with God quietly and let God open up to you and have time. You will lock yourself somewhere in the room, not going on the mountain. You can be in your house and don't allow visitors off this your phone. This our phone is evil. When you want to do your devotion, off it. Take the phone away from you. You will see that. You will pray. Even nobody here is want to say, Do you open your Bible any day and read your Bible for one hour? You understand? One hour and pray for one hour. Who has tried it? One hour you just sit down somewhere. No children disturbing you. No husband. Read your Bible for one hour. When you are studying, you pray. When you study, you pray. Who has done that? One hour sitting down somewhere. We have done three hours. I have done four. So, the time that it will be convenient for you, you will choose just to stay somewhere. Nobody should disturb you. And study the word of God, meditate on it, answer it the way it has this here head, heart, hands, and help. The help is relationship and motivation. So, you have to. Personally, have a personal devotion is very good for our life. Old time religion that we should go back to. You remember old time religion? What is old time religion? Old time religion. Oh, yeah? And most of the time you will be rebooking them. Ask them to, to lead. Let's discipline ourselves in trying to see God clearly. When we do that, honestly, we will live in peace with one another. Are you getting it? You will not be pointing a finger of accusation to one another when you go out to your churches or your, your women or whatever. Because first of all, you have to look at yourself. In the family, am I the one causing this problem? If there is quiet fight, 
let me discipline myself. So you discipline yourself. Everybody discipline yourself. The whole world will be what? Peaceful. You'll be peaceful. But most of the time, it is you. It is you. It is you. It is you. So, you yourself. Nobody is telling you. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, please and please, as we go back from this retreat, let's take time to study the word of God. Jesus is coming back. Let us be quiet. When we are studying the word of God, what did I say? Off your phone. No visitor. No distraction. Sit down. People try it. Let's even go and try it for 30 minutes. I'm not going to answer anybody. As I'm sitting down here, give food to your children. Do whatever you want to do. Just go to that corner. And you see that life will change. Environment will change whenever you move in. Because if people are looking for fight, they are looking for peace, they will be different. So if all of us are, eh? you want to change, you want to show power, power. The only power you should show is Jesus' power. So now, this paper that is here, please help me to give them one one. Everybody must take one one. So, oh, they will still continue, but later they will continue the Bible study with you and my dear sister this morning before you go for your breakfast. So you will listen to them today. Have you, have you finished the Bible? No. They will still continue with you for two. And in your discussion, you are not the only one talking. You will be asking them questions. As you do the Bible study, they will be standing on to read passages from the Bible. It's not our head we are saying it from. It's from the Bible. Anything you want to answer is from the Bible. Unless you want to deal with you doing, taking action, taking your exam, example from your life. If it is me, when they are asking you questions, which attitude do you derive from this passage? Don't say, eh, eh, when they are doing eh, when Mrs. Akande, or if the whole world will do, mm -mm. You yourself, you use yourself as an example. If in any way you cannot use yourself as an example, there is a problem somewhere. There is a problem somewhere. Talk about something. You are saying, you say, how will you make, how can we make uh, our church to be righteous? You say, ah. these people in my church, they don't want to hear me. You see where you are going to. You supposed to say, me. This is what I'm going to do to make our church to be what? Mm -hmm. To be righteous. When you start from yourself, hey, other people can see that they talk about themselves. But when everybody is pointing, you, 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 who is the carrier? Who is the distance? So please. So when you see that that paper that is in your hand, you will see uh, what does the passage say? That passage they have been treating the new things yesterday in Bible study. You see, what does the passage mean? Don't copy. The way you understand this that is inside the Bible, you just put it down. The answer is in the Bible. Are you are you playing? No, yes. give me, give me your book, let me copy. Mm -mm -mm. It's not like that. It's for you. So you will answer. Then when you come to ask, what is my attitude to read? My struggle, my question, uh, uh, repentance, hope. Oh. Whatever you put here, you are telling yourself that I will change it. Eh? This is what my attitude to this very person. If I'm in the shoe, this is what I will do. Not say this is what my Mrs. I know to, <laughs> to do or the whole world should do. Are you getting what you are going to write now? So it's personal to you. Then uh, hands. How can I obey? How can I obey this message? Application. How can I not say, how can Mr. Kande obey? How can Mrs. So, uh, Oluba Wale obey this passage? You now put it. Mr. Oluba Wale, I will obey this passage by me submitting to God and by me doing this thing, correcting my life. <laughs> so, help. how does this imply my relationship? How can I share this with others? So it is you, you, eh? you will be using you to answer the distance. So it's not something you will copy you. Nobody should copy. You understand what I mean? It's for you. If you uh, say, I am ready to do this and do this. Uh -uh. If you are not ready, will you copy? <laughs> eh? If you are not ready, say it here that I'm not ready. 
If you are ready, what do you ready for? Your own question, my own question will be different. What you are ready for, you know it. So don't copy anybody. Simple, simple, right today. Are you hearing me? My prayer request for myself and others. What is the prayer request? If it is two points, you put it. What is the prayer request for others you want? My prayer request for unbelievers. Who is, all, who is the person you are even monitoring? Is there any member that I don't even have somebody I'm monitoring as a spiritual mother? Did I have anybody I'm monitoring to check his, his life? Whether the person has a fear of God? You have to know. If you don't have, you now say from today, I will go and look for somebody. I will do what? I will be talking the word of God to small me. Then assign me. Uh, read what? Well, they say read uh, Romans 12, 1 to 2 ahead. So, omit that day, you can as well help them in your Bible study, let them read all those things. It's not to answer the question for them, but just make them to highlight to read it so that they can be able to answer the question by themselves. Uh, observe the passage carefully. Make observations using who, what, when, where, why, and how. Just short, short. Are you getting me now? Yes, okay, so, God will help you. Mm -hmm. So, write it neatly. When you come and give me, write your name up. I'm not going to mark it. When you write it, just write uh, your name up. But I'm going to see it. If I come now, I will say, Mrs. Akande, bring your paper. I will just say that. I will call you, you will line up. Me, I'm not reading it. I know what I, I want to see there. I want to see that. Okay. Okay. And I will say, take this. It's for you. I'm not collecting it. So that when you get to it, you teach eh, others. You may not type it like this. You may write it in paper. You teach others. Whatever you want to do. You understand? Teach your husband, teach your children. So let them have a personal. This is your personal. It's for you. I'm not going to take it home. But everybody, I must see something. Eh? I must see something inside that paper. Praise the Lord. I'll do it oh. when I come back in the afternoon. I'm going to do as it. Praise the Lord. So, you have all. Mm -hmm. You have all. Uh, I can't take your own too. You have been hearing it. Give to your. And the other is. So, everybody, let everybody answer. God bless you. So, uh, I want to.